Good to have you with us tonight, folks. Thanks for watching. A simple bond hearing today in the murder case against George Zimmerman turned into an unexpected mini trial. Zimmerman was granted bail and he will be released within a few days. The biggest surprise came when George Zimmerman took the stand after his lawyer said he wanted to make a statement to the court. I wanted to say I am sorry uh, for the loss of your son. I did not know how old he was. I thought he was a little bit younger than I am and I did not know if he was armed or not. The prosecutor immediately cross-examined Zimmerman on whether he had expressed his regret to the police on the night of the killing. And tell me, after you committed this crime and you spoke to the police, did you ever make that statement to the police, sir? N that you were sorry for what you've done or, or they're lost? No, sir. You never stated that, did you? I don't remember what I said. I believe I did say that. You told that to the police? In one of the statements, I said that I felt sorry for the family. You did? Yes, sir. The prosecutor also wanted to know why Zimmerman waited until the day of his bond hearing to apologize to the Martin family. Why did you wait so long to tell Mr. Martin and the victim's mother, the father and mother, why did you wait so long to tell them? I w was told not to communicate with them. In his apology today, Zimmerman said he thought Trayvon Martin was a little bit younger than him. But what about the 911 call when George Zimmerman said Trayvon Martin was in his late teens? How old would you say he looked? Got a button on his shirt. Late teens. Late teens, that's okay. Today, George Zimmerman's lawyer, Mark O'Mara, questioned the prosecution's investigator extensively about the probable cause affidavit against his client, Zimmerman. You used the word confronted, and I want to now know your evidence to support the word confronted, if you have any. Well, it's not that I have any. It's a word I used. I probably could have used 30 words. The prosecutor countered with this. If Mr. Martin was minding his own business and was going home and somebody comes up to him and starts accusing him or does something to him, wouldn't you consider that a confrontation? Yes. But, but the defense took another crack at that one. Do you have any evidence that supports who may have started the fight? No. Keep in mind, George Zimmerman probably could have been granted bail without any of this. Earlier in the same hearing, George Zimmerman's mother his wife and his father testified by speakerphone. Zimmerman's father said his son was swollen and cut the day after killing Trayvon Martin. Zimmerman's father was asked if he had seen pictures of his son's injuries. I saw one on the news today. The state attorney's office ever show you any of those pictures? No, they did not. The father, Robert Zimmerman, is referring to this photo allegedly taken of George Zimmerman's head on the night of the killing. The photo was obtained by ABC News. If the photo is authentic, Zimmerman's head was obviously cleaned by the time Zimmerman was taken to the police station for questioning that night. Today, the prosecution hinted at how they will address this issue. Did he not describe to the police that Mr. Martin had him on the ground and kept bashing his head on the concrete over and over and was physically just beating him with his hands? He has said that, yes. And isn't it true that there's evidence that indicates it's not true? Yes. Circuit Judge Kenneth Lester set bail at $150,000 and said Zimmerman could reside outside the state of Florida, but the judge added conditions. Zimmerman must use an electronic monitoring device, may not carry a firearm, may not use alcohol or drugs, and must abide by a curfew of 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning. Get your cell phones out. We want to know what you think. Tonight's question, is Zimmerman's defense trying to taint the jury pool? Text A for yes, text B for no to 622639, and you can go to our blog at ed.msnbc and leave a comment. We'll bring you the results of the poll later on in the show. I am joined tonight by Jane Weinstein, Traub, who is a Florida criminal defense attorney. Jane, good to have you with us tonight. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Uh, you know, when I turned on the coverage this morning, watching here on MSNBC, I, I, the first thing that hit me was, what is this? I mean, this is the most detailed bail hearing I think I've ever seen, and, and it just got so, uh, well, detailed. I was really surprised. Your thoughts? 
Well, in Florida, actually, it was pretty routine for a non-bondable offense. They're called Arthur hearings. And there is a very high standard that the state must meet in order to pre-trial detain a defendant charged with a non-bondable offense such as murder. So in that sense, it was really a very routine bond hearing. They usually do present the probable cause affidavit, and the defense lawyer usually does cross-examine the lead detective. All was fine and normal, and O'Mara was doing a great cross-examination until everyone was shocked, including me, when George Zimmerman was called to the witness stand to apologize. I mean, it was completely irrelevant testimony that was proffered and, and offered by Zimmerman, and, and it was shocking because the witness stand is really not a place to deliver messages. The witness stand is somewhere, you know, it's a place for relevant testimony, and um, it just seemed a lot of pandering for nothing. Is this an attempt to taint the jury pool? Well, it's a tough call to say. I mean, hopefully that this case will start getting played in the court more than the streets and the rallies that have been going on. But, yeah, I think it was pandering to the jury pool. Why would Zimmerman's lawyer allow him to say Trayvon was just a little bit younger when Zimmerman's own 911 call contradicts just that? I mean, that's, that's pretty much fact, isn't it? Well, it, yes, it is. And I think that O'Mara was probably surprised by that response. Uh, is he mopping up? Does he have to do some managing here at this point after that? Well, not really, because he did walk out of there with a bond, and he got very nice nuggets from the lead detective, who now has testified that there is no evidence who started this fight. And when you're having a self-defense case, that's a really nice piece of evidence to walk out of a courtroom with. Jane, what was your opinion of the uh, state's attorney there? I, I thought he was very aggressive. I was surprised at that. I thought he was very aggressive as well, um, and he was very aggressive with the press afterwards, um, very petulant almost, yelling, you know, I hope you just wait to hear the evidence. Well, the press is not the jury pool, and the defense, the same thing. I mean, you know, here are lawyers, both sides, who come out and tell a judge last week that they need to keep all the court records sealed. We have a star chamber going on until we have a hearing from the media later. And meanwhile, they're both holding press conferences and three ring circuses. So I really don't understand where the lawyers are going with the press. Will Zimmerman's testimony today be admissible in this trial? What do you think? Um, no, it won't be, but there are five other statements from him. It will be admissible only if he takes the witness stand in another proceeding and he's cross-examined with this statement. That's how it would come into evidence. Jane Weintraub, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Let's turn now to Daryl Parks, attorney for the family of Trayvon Martin. Mr. Parks, good to have you with us. Good uh, evening. You bet. Uh, some time ago on this program, you, you told me that the family would accept an apology because they are a, a Christian family, uh, and yet the apology was offered in court today, and it's my understanding that the family did not accept it. Take us down that road. What happened? Well, he, yesterday, um, Ed, he uh, made an overture to the family that he wanted to make an apology. We responded that in order to do that, we thought that there was a time and place to do that, and we would probably do that at some point in the future. However, we knew that we did not want to go into this proceeding and do such a thing. And so when he took the stand and did not offer a scintilla of evidence, instead he directed his attention to um, Mr. Um, Mr. Tracy um, Martin and, and to Ms. Sabrina Fulton, which was totally inappropriate. And so um, there's a time and place for that. We just thought that that was not the right place, and my clients are very upset about it. Did the family know that George Zimmerman was going to take the stand today? No, they did not. We had no way of knowing that. And what was the response when, that, when this was taking place? Well, they were very surprised because we thought it was very clear that, that there is a time and place for that, but this wasn't the time and place. And why do you think he took the stand? What, what do you think this defense attorney is doing? Well, it was, I think it was completely self-serving. Um, yeah, it may be, be a little bit pandering to the jury a little bit. However, we see it as um, totally inappropriate for what it took place. I think it's important. When you're in a, a pretrial situation, you are offering evidence to the court that deals with those conditions in order to set a bond. However, in this particular case, rather than asking him a question, his lawyer doesn't ask him a question so that he could direct himself um, to the court, which is the proper thing to do. And so we have a pretty much a spectacle that was made um, today in this courtroom. Mr. Parks, do you think that th this was an attempt to taint the jury? I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that Why far. Why not?
Well, I mean, you know, I, I think that he had his own reason for doing it. Hopefully he's not doing it. Hopefully we as lawyers are not supposed to do that. And I don't think that he was trying to do that on this occasion. But how unusual was it for him to take the stand in a bail hearing, especially with all the circumstances and all the media attention? I think it was very unusual, though. And if you, I was in the courtroom, and before he took the stand, um, they conferred a little bit, and obviously it seemed as if that, that decision may have been made there on the spot. You think it was made on the spot? Well, I'll say they conferred for some time period. It wasn't as if he just took him and, and popped him on the stand. They conferred to some degree, um, you, and, and then he went up there. And, and after the, the, the uh, proceeding took place, what was the reaction of the Martin family? Well, it was rather clear um, at the beginning of the court's pronouncement concerning some of the past actions of, of um, Mr. Zimmerman, um, the family um, at the court made his pronouncement uh, was, was devastated and it found it very difficult to sit in the courtroom um, as the court began to announce its decision. Do you think George Zimmerman hurt his case or helped his case today by taking the stand? I think it's very difficult to say either way. I, I think it's important to note that this, the uh, state was not attempting to try his case at a bail hearing, and they have a whole bunch of other evidence that they were going to present. So I don't think anyone should read into this as them trying their case right there on the spot. Did it, yeah. did it matter to the Martin family whether he stays behind bars or not? I think on, I mean, because he was just arrested last week, at this particular point, they would have felt better had he stayed in jail for now. What about the 150000 That number's been tossed around quite a bit uh, in the Twitter world today that this just isn't that much. Your thoughts? It's not that much, but you know, we, we, we won't comment on on how much the court should have set the, the, the bail for. However, you know, it only takes $15,000 and the right surety agent to get him out. So um, that's not a lot. Is this the right move? I mean, procedurally, uh, this happens all the time, that someone would get bail on a second-degree murder charge. This isn't unusual in that regard. But in this case, uh, were you thinking going into that courtroom, okay, he's going to be released and there's going to be some conditions, and the fact that he's out of state, the way it all unfolded finally? Well, I, I think we are, any Florida lawyer would know that bail was a real possibility in this case. We all hoped that he wouldn't get bail given just the totality of the situation. However, I, I think that the, the family just had a little bit of an of a issue with um, how it went down in terms of the pronouncement. Um, but, you know, we still have confidence in this court system that justice will prevail in the okay. end. And the final question I want to ask you tonight, Mr. Parks, the, what is your reaction to the photos that were released by ABC News? that clearly shows uh, that there was blood, in fact, a lot of blood on George Zimmerman's head. And let me say this. It, 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 uh, we know there was a fight. We know that it was, it was a tough fight, right? Him getting hit on the head was part of it. Remember, this kid was unarmed. If this kid had to fight for his life for, from a guy who had a 9 millimeter and beat him in the head, he had to do what he had to do. This guy still had a 9 millimeter, a deadly weapon, and in the end, he shot Trayvon Martin. Daryl Parks, thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Remember to answer tonight's question there at the bottom of the screen. Share your thoughts on Twitter at Ed Show. We want to know what you think. Coming up, Mitt Romney is losing to President Obama on just about every issue. Uh, his only hope is for the economy to go south before November. And later, Paul Ryan continues to defend the Republican war on the poor. Michael Eric Dyson joins me to hit back at Ryan's attacks on low-income Americans.